Hey guys, happy new year. Glad to be back. Um, so a couple of years ago, I built this uh, Bluetooth speaker. Nifty little guy. But uh, I didn't bother to make a video when I did it. And I used some kind of crummy speakers. So I got the, um, the Rockler Bluetooth speaker set. So I'm gonna remake this and make a few changes. So I'm gonna be doing that this month and just kind of go on stories and give it to you in little bite-sized pieces. Just the whole process from design to building it. And at the end of the month, I'll have a plans and a uh, full instructional video. So be on the lookout for the end of the month, but if that's something that you are interested in making. It's pretty cheap and uh, doesn't take much time to do. So just follow along with us this month. It'll be fun. All right, happy Wednesday. Hey, so got my speaker here, uh, my old Bluetooth speaker. I just need to make sure that what's in this box uh, is gonna fit in what I built here. So let's crack this open. All right, here's what I was looking for. It says that the control unit uh, needs a one and seven eighths diameter hole. Um, and then the speakers themselves need a two and three quarter diameter hole. So this part is gonna go on the back of the new one. These get installed uh, from the front of the baffle board, which is this piece in here that I have covered by grill cloth. And then this whole thing is gonna go over the front of that. So this is the part that's gonna go inside the hole. And then there's this little lip. So that I actually want to, I want the face of this to sit flush with the front of the baffle board so I can get my cloth on and all that. So I'm gonna rabbit it out and probably just only about like an eighth inch deeper for this part. So you want these things to be like airtight. It's box joints, so that's nice and tight. And this thing is just no space around the edges. You want all the sound coming from the speakers to be projecting out. You don't want it to escape anywhere but out. So to demonstrate. Pretty cool, right? I've gotten into the habit of before I actually build anything, I'll draw out a CAD model of the thing that I want to build just to make sure that everything fits together the way that I need it to. Um, I get an idea of how much material I'm going to need. I can play around with different joinery ideas. So obviously not everybody has the experience or the software to do 3D modeling. Totally get that. Um, fortunately, I'm going to be doing that for you. Once I get the model the way that I want it, I'm going to make some 2D drawings with dimensions and all that stuff for you. So those will be in the plans. You're welcome. The software that I use is called Shaper 3D. I use it on my iPad and it just uses the Apple Pencil. This is the cabinet and this front side. This is the back of the cabinet. This is pretty much this area right here. And that is where my baffle board is gonna go. To get my baffle board, I don't even know what this dimension is, but what I can do is I can project these lines onto this plane. So now that's my baffle board. So if I were to rebuild this box exactly the way it is now, this is about where the speakers would be sitting in relation to each other inside of the cabinet. Um, and that's just awfully close. I, I kind of want to spread them out a little bit, give the sound a little bit more room to breathe in there. So that's the room that I need for my speakers. Obviously this plate here, this front grill, um, is covering like half the speaker. We don't want that to happen. That's, that's gonna totally obscure the sound coming out of it. So, just for simplicity. I'm gonna do uh, eight tall, 12 wide, and uh, six deep. How about that? Well, that's it for me today. Um, after a hearty barbecue lunch, I get lethargic and my brain shuts off. So I'm gonna go home, finish drawing up this design, and tomorrow I'm gonna get some wood, start building this thing. So see you tomorrow. Here I'm modifying the face to accommodate larger speakers placed further apart on the baffle board. Uh, since the enclosure is getting scaled up, I need the face part to be bigger and I need to extend the slots so that it doesn't cover up the speakers but still fits within that 30 degree bubble. All right, just pulled up the Rockler, gonna go get me some wood. This is my local store, um, Altamont Springs, just outside of Orlando, Florida. Nice little spot. Cool. This one's nice and wide. Uh, I don't want to have to join any boards together just to do this little project. Um, this already has the width that I need. 
and it's got that kind of nice purpley tone that walnut sometimes gets. It's important to show you the other side is a lot of sapwood. So that's important in kind of figuring out what side of the piece you want to work with and um, you know, working from there accordingly. So I like this piece, I'm gonna get it. Booyah! And here's something cool for all you guys that live around the uh, Gulf Coast of Florida. They're opening a new Rockler in Brandon. All right, after all the design modifications and everything, I landed on some final dimensions, uh, eight high, 12 wide, and six deep. Um, so we're gonna measure this board up, cut it in some smaller pieces, just to make it a little bit more manageable for milling. Here we go. So the whole thing is basically comprised of six main pieces. Top, side, side, bottom, it's four. Front and back, six. So I just need to measure it out and uh, make sure that I cut it into some smaller pieces to make it a little bit more manageable for milling. And then we'll actually start cutting to final dimension. So I just noticed that there's this little split here at the end. Um, didn't see that before. So I'm gonna to wanna to use as much of this side of the board as I can. And again, I've got you know plenty of space, so it's not a big deal, but this side will probably get cut off. All right, so the board's a little bit too wide for the joiner, and I need to trim them down a little bit so I can get them you know, flat lay on the bed. Um, I know that I'm just cutting them to rough dimension, but it's still very important to have one straight edge running along the fence while I'm trimming them down. Um, it's just safer that way. Just narrowed these up a little bit. Let's see if it fits on the joiner now. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, let's flatten these bad boys. Real quick before I bring this stuff out of the planer to normalize the thickness, I want to emphasize the importance of the joiner. If you ask me, the joiner is the most important tool in your shop. Number one, most important because it flattens your stock. Um, but I found that a lot of people don't really understand what a joiner is for. They think that it's just, you know, just to give you a nice gluing edge, which, you know, why would they make an eight inch wide uh, bed if that's all it was for? And a lot of folks, strangely, I found that think that Putting, uh, putting a warp board through a planer will somehow flatten it. All that that does is give you a slightly thinner, equally warped board. I've had this piece of camphor sitting here in the shop for quite some time, and I haven't done anything with it. It's just, I don't feel like messing with it, but it's just so unbelievably warped. Look at that. That's how it sits. Check this out. So watch what happens when I put this piece of camphor through the planer as is. <sighs> smells so good. Camphor, love it. Anyway, all that was to demonstrate, look, I just put this through the planer and it is slightly thinner, but every bit as bowed as it was before. That's why you need a joiner. Planer just won't do it. Well, you can make a sled, but just get a joiner. All right, so this being freshly milled wood, uh, you can expect a lot of internal stress. Uh, there's just stress inside the wood and you have to anticipate for that. So what I'm gonna do is lay these boards out, sticker them and let them sit overnight. I think you'd be surprised at how much they move overnight. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, milling them down to final thickness. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Martin, uh, where are we left off? I milled the boards down just to do an initial flattening and then I laid them out and stickered them, give them a chance to kind of acclimate to the atmosphere in here. We had a cold front over the weekend, so I wanted to make sure that the boards had enough time to settle down uh, before I milled them down to final dimension. So. Let's see how flat they are. That's pretty good. 
moved a little bit. One more light pass on the joiner and I got these all flattened up. I mean, they're dead flat. And because it had time to settle over the weekend, um, we shouldn't really move too much more. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back to the planer and get them down to final thickness. Came in about three thousandths shy. That's not a huge deal. So just a three thousandths shy of three quarters of an inch. I can work with that. Now this piece right here, this has um, still has a little bit of a live edge here, and I want this cathedral to be pretty much dead center of that part. So I'm going to trim a little bit off of this side, but most of what I remove is going to be from this side to get rid of this live edge. Now, we'll cut to length. I know that I want my sides to be eight inches tall. And I know that this is my cut line, so I can actually just measure from this here, because this is gonna be my keeper side. Mark my eight right here. And then set up my stop. Now, if it's not dead on eight inches, it's not a big deal. All you're really looking for is that your sides are exactly the same size and that your top and bottom are exactly the same size. If you're a couple thousands off, no sweat. This is good. All right. So that's square. Yeah, pretty good. All right. All right, for the old one, I just used this Freud box joint set and I made three eighths box joints. And to do that, I made this little box joint jig and it's super easy. I can't tell you how easy this is. It just attaches to my regular sled with dovetail hardware so it doesn't get in the way of my piece. Um, and then it's, you know what, let's just build one. Cool, 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 cool. All right, the new fence, so we can get rid of this one. The one that I replaced um, doesn't have to be the full width of your thing, because you know your majority of your, your part is gonna be sitting right here. We just clamp her down. I've got these, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it once real quick here and see if these fit, and if they do, then I can continue on. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in here just to keep everything still. And now we stick our pin in facing the opposite direction of the clamps. So clamps are going this way, Pin's got to go out. Bada bing, bada boom. There's my pin. 
Now we can put the fence back. Now we're not gonna tighten the clamps down yet because we need to position our pin. So we need a spacer, the equal width of this kerf. So what I do is I use one of these other pieces that I have to put it in the kerf. And then from the piece that I cut the pin from, I use that as my spacer. And then you just tighten your clamps down. I know that I'm cutting three quarter inch material and I'm gonna, it doesn't have to be exact right now, I'm just checking the spacing and then I'll, and I'll set the blade height once I make sure the spacing is correct. It's a good idea to test your spacing with some scrap material. Um, this isn't the exact same thickness as my walnut parts, but um, it's really just to test, make sure that I have this spaced correctly. So. All right, moment of truth. Ooh wee, goes together easy. Snug, but not too snug. There, right there. That's what you want a box joint to look like. Hot dog, that is pretty snazzy. Heck yeah. Where we left off, I just cut all the box joints and dry fitted it. it, seemed to fit together pretty nicely. So now I'm gonna glue it up and uh, we need to cut the front grill, the baffle board and the back. So let's do that right now. Now there's, with box joints, there's so much glue surface. I mean, just a ton of glue surface. So I have to kind of work quickly to get this thing all glued up and put together before it starts drying. So, be, but because it fits so snugly, uh, even without glue, I really don't need a whole lot of glue. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. All right. Well, neat. Here we go. Set my fence. The end of this slot is going to be right here.
Okay. So now we can our stops and then this is this end. Boom. See? Now these speakers, they require a two and three quarter inch diameter hole. Um, doing that with a Forstner bit, this is a big old biscuit. Uh, I do not recommend doing this without a drill press. Don't try to do that. The other option is to use a, a hole saw. Those are more common. They're easier to find than a Forstner bit this size, but. Bada bing, bada boom. Right, I forgot I was gonna make these half them stick. I'm gonna play them down real quick. All right, baffle board's cut. And now we're gonna drill the hole in the back panel for the, uh, the control unit. I want it dead center. So again, easiest way to find dead center is to just go corner to corner where they intersect, that's your center. Right there. Just like I did in the old one here, I'm gonna bevel these edges of this face frame and it's not really a normal cut. You, you can't just tilt your blade and run the part like normal. You have to run the part upright like this. And I do not recommend doing that just with your hands um, running along the fence. That's dicey. So to do that, I'm gonna use this right here. starting to look like something. Hey, uh, I was out of the shop for a week with a cold, probably still here a little bit. Um, so I'm a little behind on this project, but I'm feeling good. So let's get this thing wrapped up. I need to route uh, little rabbits in here so that the speakers can sit behind this face of the baffle board because I don't want them getting in the way of mounting this. Um, I'm gonna put a little eighth inch round over on all these slots. It just looks kind of nice. Um, and, you know, sand everything, install the speakers, and that'll be it. sits in there quite nicely. Friction. There's such little room um, within these slots for that bearing to move. There's not a whole lot of clearance there. So instead of trying to place it down correctly, I don't, I don't wanna do that. I could come down too far on one side or the other and just trash the whole thing. So I'm gonna make sure that it's dead center I've got clearance on both sides, and then I'm gonna hold this down here while I turn it on. Um, yeah, that's just, that's gonna be safer. Ooh, that looks good. 
looks nice. That looks sharp. Cool, cool, cool. Almost forgot. Um, still got a chamfer the actual box. Every inner and outer edge has a chamfer on it. So let's do that now. Cool. All right. Moving on. I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this baffle board black because the gold cloth that I'm using is kind of see-through. And with the speakers being black, it would just stick out like a sore thumb. So I'm gonna spray paint this real quick. There we go. Some real sophisticated stuff I'm doing here. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and finish sanding all my parts and then we can put it together. I almost made a horrible mistake. I almost stapled this on without putting on my speakers and they load from the front. That would have been bad. Sweet. All right, that's what that's supposed to look like. Man, that's snug. Love it. Blue goes to blue. White goes to white. And red goes to red. All right. All right, let's see how she sounds. Power. All right. Ooh, that's delightful. All right, now for the real test. Tight, baby.